righty, here we are taking a look at Harley Benton's CST-24T in Emerald Flame Green. Oh, rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Great name. Great name. I want arbitrarily weird names on my guitars. Often, especially with lower priced guitars, the worse the name, the better the guitar. And this name, it's like they didn't even want to name it. It's somebody said, you have to name this something. It has to be called something. And it's like, well, we'll give it like a model number, a CST-2014. The name of the company is Harley Benton, which, which is like a guy's name. It's also called the CST-24 Deluxe on the headstock, which we'll find out about shortly. So there's some confusion there. Either way, it's a terrible name, but... A good guitar, spoiler alert. And my dog's afraid of it, which is also a very good sign. Whenever we have uh, anything come into the apartment, my dog's afraid of it. But especially with guitars I've found, the more afraid he is of the packaging and the, just the guitar in general, the better the guitar is going to sound. And this was really uh, very true on this guitar. This is a, I, I'm really having a lot of fun with this guitar. More spoiler alerts that this is a, a good guitar. There we go. And uh, everything came right on time. It was manufactured in Vietnam. The company Toman is German, uh, though they have manufacturing all over the world. Packaged very well. Came in about eight to ten days. I live um, in Southern California. I think it was eight days. Should have counted. I didn't. Uh, the dog is going to inspect here again. He is very, very wary of this guitar. I'm going to go ahead and try and open this with one hand and fail here. Um, and realize it quickly, but there we go. There's the there's the fretboard. It's Jakota wood, which is a, a Brazilian cherry wood, which is not my favorite wood. Um, although I do love this flame maple, which we will look at in a second. This is the Wilkinson trim system, which is not good, but that's okay because it's a cheap guitar and it's very very difficult to put good uh, trim systems on cheap guitars, in my experience. Um, a lot of in my experience uh, in this. There it is. Gorgeous. Is it not just an absolutely gorgeous guitar? I, what is it about like a green guitar? It's a phase I think we all go through. Um, we all need a green guitar at some point. And this is the most popular color on the thing. Look at that flame maple just under that candy finish. And I know matte finishes are, are very big right now. I love a great matte finish, I, but I'm partial to like very shiny candy coated wood. I just love, it looks protected and safe under like an inch and a half of, although it's not that thick. That's not, it's not a very thick finish, but it is a good finish. Same thing on the headstock here. Very PRS reminiscent. Harley Benton has a, uh, a similar vibe. That's a graphite nut, even though it looks like it's um, plastic. There's the binding, well bound, everything looks great. You can see just how, I love the, the dark and light sections of this wood. It just looks like a, um, it's like a velvet couch from the 80s or something. It just, it looks very kind of matted and, and kind of um, complex and beautiful. I don't like the black back plates, but what are you gonna do? Life goes on. Um, and yeah, there is the finish all the way up the neck. I usually want a matte finish on my necks. This isn't actually that bad. Yeah, you can see there, by the way, it says CST24 Deluxe. We don't know what that means. As I, ordered, <laughs> I think they're the same guitar, but whatever. It <laughs> doesn't really matter. The other good news is that my dog really enjoys playing with the styrofoam. And I'm just going to give him, just move it closer to him and see how scared of it he is. Because it is a, yeah, that, see, that's a really good sign. You really want your dog to be arbitrarily terrified of your guitar. Probably because it's fighting him for lap space. What do you think, pal? You like it? Yeah, me too.
with the Harley Benton CST24 Deluxe. Uh, I am not sure if it's a C CST24 T Deluxe or just a CST24 Deluxe. Um, it is a terrible, terrible name for a very, very good guitar. Um, I really love this guitar. <laughs> Uh, I've been playing a lot of it, but let me let me let me uh, start with some of the other stuff first. This is by Harley Benton. Um, I've had a Harley Benton cab cabinet uh, 60 watt um, that I built an ISO box for, put in the other room. Everything you've heard on this channel has come through that cab. So I've worked with Harley Benton before. Worked with them. I've bought their stuff before. Based out of Germany, they have manufacturing all over the world. They're very very cheap and they make very very good stuff, in my opinion. The stuff I uh, used of theirs has always been very, very good. Um, this particular guitar was made in Vietnam. It is the Emerald Flame Top Selection. Um, I actually found out to my dismay that it was the most popular choice. It's just such an absolutely gorgeous color. From what I can tell, any kind of color variations just comes in the flame maple top that you can see beautifully here. Uh, Two-tone book match, really well done. Um, Simple, otherwise this is a push-pull pot here. It splits the Alnico 5 uh, humbucker pickups. But otherwise a really just simple guitar. It has a trim system that I am not happy about. <laughs> but it's really, really difficult to do a quality trim system for a, a, a small amount of money. It's not awful, it just puts the guitar out of tune pretty much right away. In my experience. My experience. I'm not trying to pick a fight with you, Toman. Um, so I don't know. Har is, I don't know what Harley Benton is. Also, is there a guy named Harley Benton involved, or is that just like an Americany, Englishy kind of name, Western name? Not suggesting that Germany isn't in the West. Let me not run afoul of <laughs> any major corporations or countries. I love everybody. I think everybody is perfect. Everybody who's watching this, I want you to just give yourself a big hug right now, because I am not. I don't want anybody to feel insulted. Long story short, this guitar is such quality for such a low amount of money. I mean, I thought the Epiphone 339 that I did a video on recently, uh, wh which was the best guitar I've ever played out of the box, it was intonated out of the box. This was not intonated out of the box. I had to intonate it. Not a big deal. Just the way it is. Um, the Epiphone I got uh was intonated out of the box it was like basically set up by chicago music exchange before it got here um this wasn't set up but it really didn't require a great deal i just did a i lowered the action a little bit and i did a basic intonation i haven't straightened the neck i'm gonna have to do a full setup on it um, i'm gonna probably change a few things about it too I'll, I'll get more into that um but right out of the box it's playable they're called student grade um guitars by wikipedia i don't know what that means this is you could gig with this thing right now you could you might you know you might have some issues but um it sounds spectacular um i did a, a sound test earlier just in terms of 60 cycle feedback i'll play that right now comparison You're hearing the comparison from my main guitar, which is my Warmoth Tele, which has a stacked single coil in the neck, which handles uh, distortion and gain very, very well. I live in a very large apartment complex. I think that makes my electricity more uh, hummy. I'm not sure. I don't know anything about a lot of this stuff, so <laughs> I'm guessing. Um, but it's really hard to get a clean tone in this building. Um, and this handles it pretty well. Again, this is a $320 guitar, door to door, and it can handle a lot of power. So in, why I got it is specifically because I want like a metal E guitar. I want a shredder. I want to learn how to become one of those cool shredder guys. And this is kind of the type of guitar I was thinking about getting. And I saw it was so cheap. I was like, yes, why not do it? Right out of the box, this thing is a lot of fun to play. And, um, it's an incredibly fast neck. The neck is different. Now, I've played a lot of PRSs. I've never bought a PRS. They're a little bit out of my price range in general. And that's not a slight. They sh they're very, very quality um, guitars. But the other thing is that I've never found one that I really enjoyed the neck on. 
not a slight again against PRS. I love you, PRS. Everybody hug yourselves again. I'm so, I keep insulting people. Okay, but I've tried a bunch of them. I've never found a neck that I really liked on one. I don't know why. I like the neck on this. And it was a gamble. Whenever you buy a guitar without having held it or played it, you're going to have some surprises and you might just despise the neck. And I figured, well, you know, it's uh, 300 bucks basically. I can get another neck if I really want, and now I still have a great guitar. Now, Paul Reed Smith has said, the guitar you buy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. Paul Reed Smith has said, you're buying the neck. That's what guitar makers are. He said they're neck makers, I believe, I'm paraphrasing. Um, which is an astute statement because he feels that much of what the guitar is exists in the neck. And in that way, I enjoy this more than the PRSs I've played. I don't think this is a better guitar than PRS Custom or even um, a PRS, uh, one of their, um, I forgot the name of their lower, the, their lower price brands. But I, I think those are probably better guitars. And if you can afford one and you want to support that company, I think you should. If you can't, this is a spectacular alternative. It is a very nice fun guitar. The neck on this is just, it's much more similar to my telling neck. It's a little bit beefier, I think. For me, it just, it has a little bit more weight and that lets me just be a lot quicker up and down the neck, which is again, why I got this guitar. I want to be a cool shredder guy and the, I want that speed up and down the neck. The binding on the neck is beautiful. There's one little dot down here that didn't get put in properly. It's just, a, it's like a, it's like a, a centimeter too small. Um, not a huge deal. In fact, I often like that type of stuff. I'm not a relic guy, but I do like finding little kind of um, uh, uh, superficial mistakes on things. There's also like just a couple dents up here, uh, little things in the paint job up here that probably happened during shipping. Um, great things about this. This is a graphite nut. I didn't realize that at first. This is a white graphite nut. Okay, and also just by the way, if you're not familiar with uh, PRS guitars, all right, so this is my Les Paul kit guitar. I built this, or I put it together. Um, and while it is not officially a Les Paul or even an Epiphone, and it is ugly to everybody except for me, um, I finish. beautiful, huh? Doesn't sound good, but looks great. Um, <laughs> uh, but you can see through the nut here, we have. Uh, our tuning machines all the way at the edges of the paddle here on the headstock, which means there's going to be a great deal more friction at the nut because it takes that angle. What PRS did, and what other companies do too, uh, I, remember, I don't know if PRS was the first company to do this. Um, I remember Siegel did it back in the day too. I don't know which came first, PRS began in the 80s. I don't know who invented it. Um, but what PRS does is they put all the tuning machines in a line. This is again a Harley Benton. We're talking about Harley Benton guitar, but this is a, a knockoff of a PRS style headstock. Um, and it's a, it's a smart move because it causes much less friction here, meaning this G string doesn't go out of tune every two seconds. And if you're a super shredder like I intend to be, um, all these super crazy bends and the, uh, the tremolo stuff, you want as much, you want as much help there at the nut not having friction and not going out of tune as possible. The other thing that they kind of copy about the headstock is just the design. I mean, PRS is a, is a gorgeous guitar. Um, they don't have the bird inlays. Sometimes companies will just like do the bird inlay, they just straight up rip off everything about the guitar. I like that they don't do that. They have just little easy, simple perlite dots wide here, two down here. Um, I like that design. I appreciate that. I might get a new neck. I'm sorry, Harley Benton. I apologize, sir, but um, I, I actually do like this neck a lot. I know I just was talking about how much I like the neck. The only thing that's tricky about it are two things. One is there's some rough points on the frets, not a huge deal, but there's just like some scratchiness there, which I'm not used to. And I'm not even sure if that's a thing. Do people get that scratchy frets? It's like, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's like, a, you feel like you're digging into the middle a little bit. So maybe it's just a couple frets. I might just have uh, them redone. I might have this neck refretted. It also, it does have a gloss finish all over the guitar, which I generally like. It has this gloss finish on the neck. Um, normally gloss finishes will kind of, my hand will kind of catch a little bit, especially if there's moisture on my hand. 
Um, it's like 104 degrees in Southern California right now, which is why the AC is on. I do have moisture in my hands. It's not catching. It's really not an issue. So it's fine for me. I, I don't know that I'll actually like have this sanded off or anything like that. It, it, it's nothing that, it's all superficial changes that I would make. Um, largely, except for one. Another main reason I got this guitar, okay, is for, I want a tram guitar, okay, I've, I put the um, bridge down on my, on my strap, okay, I did that in high school, I couldn't handle that whammy bar, I wasn't into it. I want a whammy bar guitar, I want a really good tram system, and I knew it's very difficult to put a quality tram system in a cheap guitar, as I've said, um, and they've not done that here. It is not a quality trim system. Strings go out of tune right away. The other thing is, it is heavy. It's a 10 pound guitar, um, which a lot of people don't like. A lot of people like chambered guitars. I like chambered guitars. If you're somebody who plays a lot on stage, it's gonna dig into your shoulder over time. If you're somebody who plays a lot on their lap, it might not be that big a deal. It ha doesn't have a great deal of neck dive. It'll, it'll fall in every direction. I don't know the proper like seating technique for this, because everything has neck dive if you push it in the wrong direction. I was able to balance it yesterday. So it is uh, a heavy guitar, it's a 10 pound guitar, but it doesn't have a lot of neck dive. It isn't, um, it has some. <laughs> um, it isn't a, an unwieldy weird guitar, and it feels solid. I kind of like a solid guitar a little bit. Like I like to know that if, you know, if the show goes poorly, I can always defend myself with a piece of wood in my hand. These are DLX machine heads. Um, they don't seem great, they don't seem bad. I might, you know, everybody's into the Slipshot um, tuning machines now. I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but I've never had a set of Slipshots. I kinda like the old school ones where you put them in the top, but I would probably change the tuning machines. Other than that, I feel like I got away with getting a PRS Custom for like 300 bucks door to door. 320, I keep dropping the price down. Um, all right, so again, Wikipedia called this a student-grade guitar, student-grade company, which is fair. Um, if you have a guitar student in your life, if you have somebody who wants to be a shredder, I, I, I'd be hard-pressed to go to find something that makes more sense than this. Like, when I was a kid, I was into hockey when I for like a year and a half, including during the period of time where I realized that I'm a very top-heavy person and I'm not designed for hockey. Or football, really. These are realizations I came to. And yet, we still had all the hockey equipment for the next, like, 15 years that we had bought. It's just this giant amount of expensive equipment that uh, I wasn't going to use. So, PRS guitars are kind of like hockey equipment. I don't think you should buy one, frankly. Again, not, not taking a bite with your PRS. I love you. If you can afford one, get one. Um, but if you're not sure if you're going to play or if the person you're getting the guitar is going to play for a long time, but you don't want to limit their where they can go, if you really want to give them a great guitar, but you don't want to risk anything more than a couple hundred bucks, I'd say go with uh, Harley Benton by Toman or Tomon's Harley Benton. Even though, again, I don't know who Harley Benton is. There's there's other knockoffs out there of PRS stuff. Try those out if you like. This is the one I got, uh, and I'm extraordinarily happy with it. So thanks for checking out my channel. Thanks for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed this review. Check out my other reviews. Check out my backing tracks. Check out my... Uh, I have a guitar lesson or two up there now, bunch of videos. Check out self-taught guitar. Yes, I am entirely self-taught, except for uh, I have a guitar teacher now who's trying to fix a lot of the damage I've done. Uh, any guitar players who've watched my stuff know how weird my <laughs> hand stuff is. Um, I'm trying to fix all that. That'll all be stuff that I do on the channel. Uh, unlearning bad habits, learning good habits after over 20 years of playing. These are things I'm interested in doing. One of the reasons I got this guitar is because, again, I want to become more of a metal shreddy guy. Um, when I was in school, uh, in high school, like the metal heads and the blues, like the metal guitar players and the blues guitar players, like we didn't get we didn't get along together for some reason. Um, we were both pretentious and incorrect, but in separate ways. And um, I think slowly but surely the that is dying down, and blues people and 
and metal people, broadly speaking, kind of classic rocky metalcore, hardcore people coming together, R&B people, funk people, we're all coming together, and we're just joining in, and we're finding a lot more of these guitars, like the um, the Gibson 335 and 339, um, which are famously versatile, the Telecaster, which is famously versatile, and I think guitars like these PRS guitars are the versatile guitars that are not designed for exactly one specific sound, I think are going to become much more popular. And get this while well, it's 320 bucks, is what I'm saying. I don't know how they can do it for 320 bucks. So check out my channel, Self Talk Guitar. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you like, tell me what you didn't like, tell me if you have this guitar and disagree. Um, I know there's a bunch of other brands, again, that do this type of thing. If you have uh, one of those, tell me about it. Um, pick a fight in the comments section with each other, guys. Don't let somebody just say something and just not go unresponded to, okay? Get weird with each other. And keep playing guitar.